Edmund Hawley, was an English astronomer, geophysicist, mathematician, meteorologist, and physicist who is best known for computing the orbit of Halley's Comet. He was the second astronomer royal in Britain, succeeding John Flamsteed. Early Life Hawley was born in Hagerstown, in East London. His father, Edmund Hawley Sr., came from a Derbyshire family and was a wealthy soap maker in London. As a child, Hawley was very interested in mathematics. He studied at St. Paul's School, and from 1673 at the Queen's College, Oxford. While still an undergraduate, Hawley published papers on the solar system and sunspots. Career Publications and Inventions Hawley became an assistant to John Flamsteed, the Astronomer Royal at the Greenwich Observatory, in 1675, and among other things, had the job of assigning what is now called Flamsteed numbers to stars. In 1676, Hawley visited the South Atlantic island of St. Helena and set up an observatory with a large sextant with telescopic sights to catalogue the stars of the Southern Hemisphere. While there he observed a transit of Mercury, and realized that a similar transit of Venus could be used to determine the absolute size of the solar system. He returned to England in May 1678. In the following year he went to Danzig, Gdansk, on behalf of the Royal Society to help resolve a dispute. Because astronomer Johannes Hevelius did not use a telescope, his observations had been questioned by Robert Hooke. Hawley stayed with Hevelius and he observed and verified the quality of Hevelius' observations. In 1679 Hawley published the results from his observations on St. Helena as Catalogus Stellarum Australium which included details of 341 southern stars. These additions to contemporary star maps earned him comparison with Tycho Bra, e.g. the southern Tycho as described by Flamsteed. Hawley was awarded his M.A. degree at Oxford and elected as a Fellow of the Royal Society at the age of 22. In 1686, Hawley published the second part of the results from his Helnian expedition, being a paper and chart on trade wines and monsoons. The symbols he used to represent trailing wines still exist in most modern-day weather chart representations. In this article he identified solar heating as the cause of atmospheric motions. He also established the relationship between barometric pressure and height above sea level. His charts were an important contribution to the emerging field of information visualization. Hawley spent most of his time on lunar observations, but was also interested in the problems of gravity. One problem that attracted his attention was the proof of Kepler's laws of planetary motion. In August 1684, he went to Cambridge to discuss this with Isaac Newton, much as John Flamsteed had done four years earlier, only to find that Newton had solved the problem, at the instigation of Flamsteed with regard to the orbit of Comet Kirch, without publishing the solution. Hawley asked to see the calculations and was told by Newton that he could not find them, but promised to redo them and send them on later, which he eventually did, in a short treatise entitled, on the motion of bodies in an orbit Hawley recognized the importance of the work and returned to Cambridge to arrange its publication with Newton, who instead went on to expand it into his Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica published at Halley's expense in 1687. Halley's first calculations with comets were thereby for the orbit of Comet Kirch, based on Flamsteed's observations in 1680 to 1. Although he was to accurately calculate the orbit of the comet of 1682, he was inaccurate in his calculations of the orbit of Comet Kirch. They indicated a periodicity of 575 years, thus appearing in the years 531 and 1106, and presumably heralding the death of Julius Caesar in a like fashion in 44, 45 BCE. It is now known to have an orbital period of circa 10,000 years. In 1691, Hawley built a diving bell, a device in which the atmosphere was replenished by way of weighted barrels of air sent down from the surface. In a demonstration, Hawley and five companions dived to in the River Thames, and remained there for over an hour and a half. Halley's bell was of little use for practical salvage work, as it was very heavy, but he made improvements to it over time, 
later extending his underwater exposure time to over four hours. Hawley suffered one of the earliest recorded cases of middle ear barrow trauma. That same year, at a meeting of the Royal Society, Hawley introduced a rudimentary working model of a magnetic compass using a liquid-filled housing to damp the swing and wobble of the magnetist needle. In 1691 Hawley sought the post of Savillian Professor of Astronomy at Oxford, but, due to being accused of atheism, was opposed by the Archbishop of Canterbury, John Tillotson, and Bishop Stillingfleet. The post went instead to David Gregory, who had the support of Isaac Newton. In 1692, Hawley put forth the idea of a hollow earth consisting of a shell about 500 miles, 800 kilometers, thick, two inner concentric shells and an innermost core. He suggested that atmospheres separated these shells, and that each shell had its own magnetic poles, with each sphere rotating at a different speed. Hawley proposed this scheme to explain anomalous compass readings. He envisaged each inner region as having an atmosphere and being luminous, and possibly inhabited, and speculated that escaping gas caused the aurora borealis. In 1693 Hawley published an article on life annuities, which featured an analysis of age at death on the basis of the Breslau statistics Caspar Newman had been able to provide. This article allowed the British government to sell life annuities at an appropriate price based on the age of the purchaser. Halley's work strongly influenced the development of actuarial science. The construction of the life table for Breslau, which followed more primitive work by John Grunt, is now seen as a major event in the history of demography. The Royal Society censured Hawley for suggesting in 1694 that the story of Noah's flood might be an account of a cometary impact. Exploration Years In 1698, Hawley was given command of the, a pink, so that he could carry out investigations in the South Atlantic into the laws governing the variation of the compass. On August 19, 1698, he took command of the ship and, in November 1698, sailed on what was the first purely scientific voyage by an English naval vessel. Unfortunately problems of insubordination arose over questions of Halley's competence to command a vessel. Hawley returned the ship to England to proceed against officers in July 1699. The result was a mild rebuke for his men, and dissatisfaction for Hawley, who felt the court had been too lenient. Hawley thereafter received a temporary commission as a captain in the Royal Navy, recommissioned the Paramour on August 24, 1699 and sailed again in September 1699 to make extensive observations on the conditions of terrestrial magnetism. This task he accomplished in a second Atlantic voyage which lasted until September 6, 1700, and extended from 52 degrees north to 52 degrees south. The results were published in General Chart of the Variation of the Compass, 1701. This was the first such chart to be published and the first on which isogonic, or Hallian, lines appeared. The preface to Aunt Sham and John Churchill's collection of voyages and travels, 1704, supposedly written by John Locke or by Hawley, made the link. Natural and moral history is embellished with the most beneficial increase of so many thousands of plants it had never before received, so many drugs and spices, such unaccountable diversity. Trade is raised to highest pitch, and this not in a niggard and scanty manner as when the Venetians served all Europe, the empire of Europe is now extended to the utmost bounds of the earth. In November 1703, Hawley was appointed Savilly and Professor of Geometry at the University of Oxford, his theological enemies, John Tillotson and Bishop Stillingfleet having died, and received an honorary degree of Doctor of Laws in 1710. In 1705, applying historical astronomy methods, he published Synopsis Astronomia Cometici which stated his belief that the comet sightings of 1456, 1531, 1607, and 1682 were of the same comet, which he predicted would return in 1758. Hawley did not live to witness the comet's return, but when it did, the comet became generally known as Halley's Comet. 
By 1706 Hawley had learned Arabic and completed the translation started by Edward Bernard of books 5th to 7th of Apollonius's conics from copies found at Leiden and the Bodleian Library at Oxford. He also completed a new translation of the first four books from the original Greek that had been started by the late David Gregory. He published these along with his own reconstruction of Book 8 in the first complete Latin edition in 1710. In 1716, Hawley suggested a high-precision measurement of the distance between the Earth and the Sun by timing the transit of Venus. In doing so, he was following the method described by James Gregory in Optica Promota, in which the design of the Gregorian telescope is also described. It is reasonable to assume Hawley possessed and had read this book given that the Gregorian design was the principal telescope design used in astronomy in Halley's day. It is not to Halley's credit that he failed to acknowledge Gregory's priority in this matter. In 1718 he discovered the proper motion of the fixed stars by comparing his astrometric measurements with those given in Ptolemy's Almagest. Arcturus and Sirius were too noted to have moved significantly, the latter having progressed 30 arc minutes, about the diameter of the Moon, southwards in 1800 years. In 1720, Together with his friend the antiquarian William Stookley, Hawley participated in the first attempt to scientifically date Stonehenge. Assuming that the monument had been laid out using a magnetic compass, Stookley and Hawley attempted to calculate the perceived deviation introducing corrections from existing magnetic records, and suggested three dates, 460 BC, 220 AD and 920 AD, the earliest being the one accepted. These dates were wrong by thousands of years, but the idea that scientific methods could be used to date ancient monuments was revolutionary in its day. Hawley succeeded John Flamsteed in 1720 as Astronomer Royal, a position Hawley held until his death. Hawley died in 1742 at the age of 85. He was buried in the graveyard of the old church of St. Margaret's, Lee, since rebuilt, at Lee Terrace. Blackheath. He was interred in the same vault as the astronomer Royal John Pond, the unmarked grave of the astronomer Royal Nathaniel Bliss is nearby. His original tombstone was transferred by the Admiralty when the original Lee Church was demolished and rebuilt it can be seen today on the southern wall of the Camera Obscura at the Royal Observatory, Greenwich. His marked grave can be seen at St. Margaret's Church, Lee Terrace. Personal Life Hawley married Mary Took in 1682 and settled in Islington. The couple had three children.